Welcome back. Starting today, I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. Based on feedback from some of you and based on advice from some more expert chess players, I'm going to try to actually do a system here instead of just haphazardly choosing to play a bot or if I feel like it playing a rapid game or realizing I haven't done puzzles in a while and then doing them. What I'm going to try to do, at least for a little while, is every day I'm going to analyze the rapid game that I played on Lee Chess the night before. I'm going to try to do a one session of Puzzle Rush. And then I'll either play a bot or solve puzzles or play a rapid game, depending on which one feels more appropriate at the time. At first, I thought I would do all of those in one video, like a today's session or something, but I think it'll be shorter if I try to break it up into smaller videos. And so in this one, what I'm going to do is analyze the rapid game that I played on Lee Chess last night. And this one, I started off doing something I don't think I've ever done before, certainly not, I don't think intentionally, in a rapid game, and that's, I played the English opening. I played C4. And I don't know anything about the English, except that when I face it, it seems kind of tough. Usually what I respond with is E5, and that's what my opponent has responded with. I think Knight to C3 is the best move after that, although uh, Stockfish thinks maybe G3 is better. Okay, well, I'll try to keep that in mind. I, I don't know. We know that Stockfish is a little weak on openings, but I did play knight to c3 because that's what opponents have done against me. And my opponent played knight to f6, which is what I've been playing against the English. Now, since I didn't play g3 earlier, uh, Stockfish says knight to f3 is fine here, but g3 is okay too. Okay, I did play g3. I just didn't play it in the exact order that the engine was recommending. I'm curious about the opening book here. It says the most common move here is this the Lee Chess database. What about masters? Is it d5? No. Okay. Masters play bishop to b4 here, but on Lee Chess in the player's database, d5 and bishop to c5 are more common than bishop to b4. Okay. Well, my opponent played bishop to c5, which isn't one of those. Well, I hadn't thought about it much beyond this, and I know when I've played against the English, I'm pretty sure that wasn't my next move, so already I was in unfamiliar territory. It just looked like uh, one of those situations where the opponent was going to try to hop these two in here and hit that. The engine thinks I'll be just fine if I play knight to f3 here. Well, what if I played knight to f3 and they brought this in? It's not recommended, but let's say that they did it because a lot of players do it here according to the, the database. 5,000 games have reached this position. Okay, then I would play e3 to block the bishop from the from seeing that square. Well, that makes sense. Okay, well, I played e3 first because I thought that that was going to happen and I wanted to block it, but e3 is not recommended. It is pretty common here according to the database. Okay, I'm not really trying to learn this opening. I'm just curious. It worked out okay for me. I, I don't know. You can see that part of the chart there at the bottom showing that... Uh, that I did win this game, although I made some blunders somewhere in the middle. So, it, you know, if I try it again the next couple of times and it works out, I might stick with it. Okay, and here, according to the database, what I can expect is castling or d6 or knight to c6. Well, my opponent played one of those. My opponent played knight to c6, and then it makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the book there. Uh, since I've already moved the g-pawn, it makes sense to fianchetto the bishop. That does look like it's my best move. Okay. I'm not sure why Stockfish is suggesting their best move is to drop this bishop back. Is it because if they don't, I'm going to play this? No, I, sh I don't think I'm going to play d4 yet because they have uh, so many pieces pointed at that square, and I would only have two pieces defending that. Okay, so I'm not sure why it's recommending that as their best move. Okay, my opponent played their third best move. I don't know why the game review counted it as inaccurate. Oh, okay. I did I did play the best move here. Knight G to E2. I'm trying to remember now why I decided against... Okay, I think the reason that I didn't put it here is because it looked like they could just play E5 if I played Knight to F3 now. I mean E4, right? It looks like they could just immediately challenge the Knight. So I thought about putting it here. It, uh, that says it's my best move. All right, now I should expect my opponent to castle or play h6 or bishop to b6 again, a6, bishop to d7. They did play a6, either to keep my knight from coming in there or maybe it's preparing b5. I'm trying to see if b b5 is in any of those lines. I don't see it. Oh, h3 is what I should play here. I, am I still worried about the knight or the bishop coming down this way? Okay, well, I'm not, not sure why h3 is so high on the list. I thought they were preparing b5 and I thought... I can go ahead and play a3 here and, and play a b-pawn of my own, and there would be only threatening a pawn, and I'd be threatening a bishop. So, But maybe they just moved that to give the bishop a place to hide. Maybe that's what it was. Was this that bad? No, not really. Um, they played knight to e7, I guess to get out of the way of the c-pawn. Maybe so, and the rating didn't change, the evaluation didn't change that much. Well, since I had already moved uh, my A-pawn, I decided to go ahead and move my B-pawn, and it did turn out that moving their A-pawn was to get the bishop back there. 
Now castling is good for me. I did castle. All right, so I'm doing well out to move nine. Probably not in book anymore. Um, only, uh, only 45 Lee Chess games have reached this position and no master games. All right. Knight to g6 was one of my opponent's better moves. Bishop to b2 was one of mine. c6 is what they played and, and we're very close to even. d4. Okay. Now that their knight's not over here anymore, I can go ahead and play d4. Or f4, the engine thinks, perhaps to divert this pawn. It says if I played either one of those, my opponent would castle. I don't know. I don't know about that, because they still have the bishop pointed here. They still have the pawn pointed here. I think they might just go ahead and take it, but but I don't know. I, obviously, I didn't play it. What I did play was putting this knight in here, and that doesn't look like... Oh, no, it's, it's listed there. Okay. I'm trying to remember why I thought of that. Maybe to get out of the way of my bishop? Okay, well, that is what I played, and uh, neither my opponent nor I have used more than a minute yet, and we're already 11 moves in. It is my opponent's best move to take it, and my best move to take back with the bishop. Now, they should play f... no, bishop to g4, or bishop to h3 even, or castling, but f5 is up there, and that's what they played. And now I have a choice, uh, you know, where to put my bishop. Go back this way, go back this way. It looks like just putting it back where it was is best. That's what I did. And then that my opponent castled. And right here I made a mistake. I should have played f4. I don't think I considered that. If I played f4, I was, I guess, expecting them to, to push forward. Or queen to b3. Okay, I guess I could see queen to b3. It would, I suppose, be preparing this. But, um, but if I did that... The engine thinks they would put their bishop here, which seems like a good plan. And then why is, what's my queen doing over there? And it says then I would leave my queen there and, and then I would play f4. In fact, f4 shows up in three of these lines. It's either the move to make now or the move to make here in a little bit or down here. So the, the chances of me reaching this exact position again are slim, I know. But, but I'm curious, if I played f4, wouldn't they just push past? It says no. But how, how bad would it be if they did? It's not any of their choices, but what if they did that, then what would I do? I would just ignore it and play rook to c1 or rook to e1. Okay, I get c1. That pawn's undefended and can be quickly attacked. So I, I do get rook to c1. It's not an open file. I don't have, we don't have any open files yet because nothing's been captured, right? Oh no, we did trade off the knights. Okay. But all the pawns are still there, so that's not an open file. Or queen to c2, to I assume again to protect that pawn. But I don't know what rook to e1 does. I guess rook to e1 protects the knight because it says then I would play queen to c2 after that. <laughs> we would do this. And then the knight would, would be protected by the rook. Or rook to f2, which I guess does the same thing. Protects the knight in case I move the queen. But in that case, it says rook to c1 would be my next move. And if I moved my queen to b3 again, which is another option, then I would want to put the f rook on the c file. And then I guess I would be planning on expanding this way. But I played d3. Yeah, after my opponent castled, I played d3, and that's a mistake. Be oh, because they can play f4. That's why I'm supposed to play f4. See, I, I never consider that. I need to start considering that. One of the reasons to push a pawn to a certain square is to keep me, my opponent's, the pawn that's facing it, to, from getting to that square. So they're supposed to play f4 now, but they didn't. They played their second best move, which is to go after my undefended pawn. Then I noticed that the pawn was, defend was undefended. Oh, wait, no, it's not defended. I just defended it with this. With this. So I'm, I'm just supposed to put my queen up behind the pawn I just moved. But instead, I did what I should have played the move earlier. And again, they're supposed to play f4 because I didn't. That's why I was supposed to play f4. I think I got that. They played d5. And I'm supposed to put a rook on the e-file or play c5. Either rook on the e-file, apparently. Well, I don't understand that. It looked like we were about to break open right here. And so I thought it made sense to put a rook on the d-file. But Stockfish says no. The d file is not where I want a rook. That's what I did. That's another mistake. Now my opponent is up minus one, and they should have played queen to d7. That that keeps it in front of the rook, doesn't it? Or f4 again, or d4. Oh, I guess that blunts my bishop. Okay. Or queen to g5, or rook to c8. Well, my opponent didn't understand uh, about pawn breaks any more than I do, and they played this, which gives me a huge advantage only if I take that pawn, the d pawn. Oh no, it's it's also good if I take the e-pawn. Okay, well I did take the e-pawn, and they took back. So now they have connect four, and now my best move is to take their d-pawn, and I did. And they're supposed to take back, and they did, and I'm up plus two somehow. But only if I... Oh, free pawn. Okay, alright, I see it. 
I see it because the, you know that pawn is pinned. That's the whole reason I moved my rook over. I should I should have just taken their e pawn. Okay, well I didn't see it. I played my my third best move, which was putting the knight in here. But that's a blunder. My third best move is a blunder. Wow. Okay, well, I guess uh, Stockfish is counting anything that's not that first move as a blunder. I'm guessing Chess.com would have counted that as a miss. Well, I'm going after the bishop. The bishop's undefended. And if, you know, if they did something silly like play a pawn move, then I would have a nice fork here. They they got the queen out of the way of the fork and protected the bishop. It is, oh, it is my best move to take the bishop. Good, that's what I did. I thought, well, since I got the whole knight in there, uh, if they did this, you know, then I would end up with a broken pawn structure. So I went ahead and took the bishop and they took back. Now I need to play b5, or queen to b3, or rook a to c1, or rook to d2. Oh, I guess to put another rook behind it? Or a4. All right, well, I didn't notice any of that. I just went here. And they took, and I took back. Close to even again. I'm not sure exactly why, but my opponent put their knight in here. I, maybe they were thinking about coming in here. I don't know how that helps a lot, given that their, you know, their pawn is protecting. Or maybe they were thinking of coming down this way to attack the rook. I don't know. I was supposed to play queen to a2 now. Oh, lining up through this way. Oh, that would have made this pawn free. Okay, okay, I think I get that. And it says that they would have they would have jumped in here, but then I would have taken it, so that pawn wouldn't be free, because that pawn would, would take back, I assume. Oh, but then I would have two pieces hitting here. Well, I didn't see that complex series of events, so I lined up here thinking I could barrel through. My opponent's best move was to move their king over. They did not. They They jumped in there. Well, I don't feel bad for my next blunder because why would I, why would I do this? What's the, what's the, uh, oh, I would win the queen, right? Wow. Yeah, that's a complex series of events here too, but I think I saw it because it says if I took here, they would take back and, and I'm pretty sure they would. And if they did, then I would take here and basically they would have to give up their queen for the bishop and they, so let's say they did that and I would take back, but I'm only up a pawn now. It says they would put one of their rooks on the C file probably or play a pawn move, but I guess I guess that's, you know, rook on an open file and then I take this pawn, right, with my front rook? No, it doesn't matter which one apparently. And now I'm ahead because I'm up two pawns. But why am I at plus three though? Plus four. I'm only up two pawns. And it looks like king to g2 is, is in the line no matter what uh, they play. I'm either going to play king to g2 immediately or a turn or two later. And then I'm just supposed to win with this. Oh, because I have a passed pawn. Is that why it's plus four? Well, that's a variation that I didn't play. Because after they hopped that in there, I certainly did not. I'm pretty 100% sure I did not consider capturing the knight with my queen. But that's what I should have done. And any other move is a blunder. Okay, I played any other move. And so we're even again. My opponent... Played one of their better moves, attacking my queen. And again, I'm supposed to take the knight. It's the only move that takes advantage of that position. All right. Well, I didn't see that. I, I thought maybe I could come over here, but it's it's too late for that now, apparently. Uh, I should have done that earlier, but but I can do it now. They're supposed to play rook to c1 check. Oh, because, because I didn't move the bishop. I can't get out of that now. I would have to block with the bishop. Okay. But they saw that I had lined my queen up with their king and they got their king out of danger and that's a mistake. I need to play h3 to give my king some more running room. I didn't. Uh, I took that pawn. Oh, that gives them a mate in five. Oh, well that was bad. I should have played h3 to give my king running room. I get that. Or h4. And it wouldn't have been horrible if I had just taken the knight with one of my rooks. Well, I thought I was picking up a pawn here. I didn't realize that I was about to get mated after this. I didn't get checkmated. I think I mentioned already that I won this game. And I thought that they were going to take back, and I was going to take back, and, and we'd be fine. Well, they did take back. Now they don't have a mating sequence anymore. And I, and I took back. That's what I thought was going to happen. So um, I guess I'm a little better at predicting my opponent's moves than, than Stockfish is. But they should check me on the back rank. They did, and I basically have to block with the bishop, so I did. Incidentally, it's also aiming at the knight in case they ever, you know, let me move the bishop. Maybe that's what they saw because they hopped the knight out of there. Well, that's just a free knight. Oh, wow. Why didn't I take it? I saw that before noticing what Stockfish said. And so, yeah, why didn't I take the knight? I don't know, but I came down here to block their rook. Now they're supposed to check me with the knight. They didn't. They took my rook, so I took back. Now they again are supposed to check me with the knight. They did. I guess I just move out of check, right? King to g2 is slightly better. Okay, good. Well, now I'm up one pawn and we're basically in the end game now. And I didn't go behind again. Okay, so I'm not going to analyze or try to, you know, understand the rest of the game because I, I did win it and I never went behind. And I think I do understand some of the blunders that happened earlier. I would say most of them. 
But for those of you who are curious, this is how the rest of the game went. They went to protect that pawn that I wasn't attacking. I got this bishop out to attack the knight. I figured, you know, if they did this, I would come go up another pawn and have a passed pawn. Because I don't currently technically have a passed pawn. They hopped their knight out of there. I went to attack it. And that was inaccurate because they can just play g6. They didn't. They moved the rook up. I can check them now and then get behind. Wait, what was I supposed to do? Oh, I was supposed to go back to here. Oh, because the pawn. Okay. I was supposed to go back and attack this pawn. Okay. Well, I thought here if they took with en passant, which, I, you know, some of my opponents apparently don't know about that because they've missed it several times, but but a lot of my opponents do. I thought if they took with en passant, I would take with my bishop. And then if they took with the knight, I would take back with the king and my king would be guarding this pawn here, which would then be a passed pawn. It is their best move to take with en passant and my best move to take with the bishop. That's what we did. So now I have a passed pawn. And that was the reason that I played f4 there, even though I should have played it earlier in the game. They're supposed to get their knight out of the way here, but instead they, they played b5. Bishop to d5 is my best move. Okay, I understand that. I just went about that a little bit more slowly, because I did in a couple of turns play bishop to d5. But I, I thought maybe I should check first, then play that. Then no matter what they do, I can move this pawn up, and the bishop and the pawn will be protecting each other, and it's a passed pawn, right? I checked first, which wasn't horrible. They blocked with the g-pawn, and then I played bishop to d5. They're supposed to slide over here, I guess, trying to come around this way. But instead, they, they went over there, I, I guess, in a half-hearted attempt to attack that pawn. They probably didn't realize what my plan was, and that worked out well for me. Okay, they checked me here, I guess, attempting to fork uh, the bishop. Well, I came up here to protect the pawn, thinking, uh, you know, they might not take the bishop, and, and they didn't. They went after that pawn over there. Well, I didn't think I could do anything about that pawn, but I did think I can come over here and attack their pawn. So if they took mine, and I, I would take theirs, and, and then they would have to run with their knight again. That's a mistake, because they can take my pawn. Okay, well, that's that's what I thought that they would do. And it says I should go back and play what I should have played on the previous turn, which I didn't understand. So I took the pawn. They have to move the knight again. But that's a blunder because I can take it. But it's a blunder even if I don't take it. Okay, well, so what what should my opponent have done? Knight to c2? Oh yeah, aiming, aiming for that pawn. But if they had done that, I would have played rook to b6. Yeah, that's what I would have played. If they had played here aiming for this pawn, I would have moved over. And if they took it, then I would have taken here. And then if they took my bishop, I'd go there and, and my rook would be protecting the pawn. I think. Why is that such a big blunder? I'm not sure. I just thought, I mean, you know, maybe silly, but I thought if I take it, yes, I'm giving them a passed pawn, but then I have two passed pawns. And and I thought I could track at least one of theirs down. So I did take, and they did take, and it was my best move to put the rook behind it. Yeah. So now, yeah, they can come challenge this pawn, but I've got this one. They are supposed to play rook to b7, but instead they checked me, which allows me to get behind my pawn here. And then they went over there. Okay. So I take theirs, right? That was my only move. Now this got a little tense. I didn't know I was ahead here for sure. I, I know I have a little bit of a strong point here with these two passed pawns, but I wasn't sure I was up plus five. And I'll just kind of take you through here. It doesn't look like the computer marked us with any more blunders at this point. Uh, I cleared off the rest of their pawns, and now, now I have three passed pawns with my rook there. So, I yeah, okay, I didn't know that was a blunder, but I was hoping that they would take it. Right there. So we did have one more blunder in this game. Was that it? All right. Yeah, I thought, you know, if they take that, I, I'm going to give up my rook for it because then I've got two pawns here. And that's what they did. So now, yeah, now there's a mating sequence. Okay. Of course, they're going to take there. And then I just start moving these. I don't know that I did it in the right order, but but I did manage to avoid a stalemate. That was my only fear here is that, and my opponent was trying for that as well, trying to get their king trapped in front of the pawns with no legal moves. But I was pretty careful. I had time. I had four and a half minutes. My opponent had five minutes. And, uh, you know, just, again, I probably didn't do it perfectly, but I knew here I had him because I knew when I moved the G-pawn forward, oh, it looks like I could have done any number of things. Okay, well, this, this is the only one that I knew for sure how to do. I knew if I went there, they only have a, one legal move, and that's to take this pawn, and then I would bring my king forward and win. So we did this, they took there. Yeah, now I only have one move that's not a draw. They have to go out, you know, and, and give me the queen. They re they waited until then to resign, which was probably a good idea on their part. Because again, just, you know, just a few moves back, we could have easily stalemated if I didn't play the right thing. I'm actually surprised that it says there's so many options here. Like even G7 would have would have actually been my best move. Oh, I guess that would have allowed them to come out this way. Okay. 
and then I would have brought my king forward. They would have to take that pawn, and I would it would have had the same outcome. Okay, yeah, G G seven and and all that. It's about the same. Looks like okay. But that, that way I knew I could win. So I got my, my first win in a rapid game with the English opening. And, and I'm going to keep playing around with it and see, you know, I might try it in a, in a few daily games and see how that goes. Thanks for spending your time here. And I'll see you next time.